tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is uh, Frank Lilly. I am a virtual uh, visual artist and uh, uh, been a member of Mount Sinai since uh, 1966. Came to Memphis in 66 to uh, uh, go to college, and uh, I was one of the first uh, uh, black uh, uh, students at uh, then Memphis Academy of Art, uh, which has since been changed to Memphis College of Art, which has since uh, gone out of existence. Um, I, I uh, uh, was born in Clarksdale, Mississippi, and my father took the great uh, migration north when I was about four or five years old, and he uh, settled in Lansing, Michigan, uh, uh, and went to work for General Motors. Uh, so I, I often tell people I have dual uh, citizenship. I've lived in the uh, integrated north in the uh, 50s, and then uh, uh, moved, uh, moved back to Mississippi to live with my grandmother when I was about 12 to live in the segregated South. All right, thank you for that. Now that we know a little bit about yourself, let's get started. The first question is a three-part question. Part one, how do you identify yourself? Do, I, do you identify yourself as African-American, Black, Negro, mixed races, or colored? Uh, I've lived long enough to have been identified by most all of those, but I identify myself as uh, African American. Uh, in this country, we have uh, 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 the Europeans who are able to trace their lineage and say that they're uh, uh, Irish American or French American. Uh, and as a black man, I don't know uh, where my uh, people came from. I don't know if it was Ghana or the Congo or Kenya. Uh, so I, I identify myself as African American. All right. Part two. Has this identification changed over time? Oh yes. <laughs> oh yeah. We uh, started out as being uh, 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 colored, and then of course there was the N word, and then we found out that that was uh, Negro, and uh, uh, and uh, back. Uh, in the 70s, when it was I'm black and I'm proud, we wanted to be identified as black. And as we learn more about uh, where our ancestors came from, we call it African Americans. All right. And the last part of this question is your cultural identity important to you? Why or why not? Uh, yes, it is very important to me uh, uh, because uh, uh, I'm, I just don't know, uh, unable to trace uh, my lineage. Uh, uh, back any further than uh, in, in slavery. And uh, perhaps we'd like to do like Alex Haley and be able to trace our roots, but uh, most of us are, are not financially stable enough to, to be able to do that. So it is important that I am uh, recognized as African-American. All right. Thank you for that. All right, for question two, the question is, when you were a child, who was the oldest person you knew? And what story do you remember them telling, sharing with you in relation to black history? For example, slavery, death, lynching, et cetera. Uh, the oldest person that I knew was my great grandfather. His name was William uh, uh, Crawford. And and uh, as, a, as a little kid, I'd, we would walk to the uh, store and I'd, I'd walk with him to the store. And it would take us a long time to get to the store because uh, every piece of paper he would uh, see or or come across with his cane, uh, he would bend down, pick it up, and read it. And then uh, if it was nothing, he would discard it, or if he thought he could read it again sometime later, he'd put it in his pocket. And so I, I asked him, I said, uh, Grandpa, it takes us so long to go to the store. Why do you read every piece of paper you pick up? And he said, uh, Son, I was so glad when I learned to read until I uh, want to read everything I come across. And uh, that has inspired me, and I, I, I love to read. Uh, you asked about uh, lynching. Uh, uh, in every black family, we look back into our history, we'll find uh, stories of lynching, and we, we, we tend to want to hide that. We don't mention it, but I think we ought to mention it and keep it to the forefront. I had an uncle. His name was uh, William Crawford, and he was a professional gambler. And we called him Uncle Billy. And Uncle Billy would go from plantation to plantation. And uh, on uh, 
sometimes uh, Friday nights, but most mostly every Saturday night they would uh, have uh, these uh, 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 house parties, and, 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 and they would be kind of uh, like little juke joints where blues music was played, and uh, it had served fish sandwiches and whatever, and and there would be gambling going on. And it just so happens that they were gambling at this house, and uh, the white overseer of the plantation drove a road by, or drove by, and he happened to see these black folk having such a great time, a good time, because we are known as a, we are a party people. We know how to have a good time. And he wanted to get involved. So he uh, came into the to the house there and, and started participating in the gambling of uh, shooting crafts or car playing or whatever. And of course, by my uncle being a professional gambler that he was, uh, took all of the white man's money. And he, white man, left there in sorrow. So the next morning, which was a Sunday morning, my Uncle Billy came out and, and was washing his hands to prepare uh, for, for breakfast. And uh, the, uh, the overseer, the white overseer, uh, drove up and uh, uh, with a double barrel shotgun blew my Uncle Billy away. And of course, we were sad, and the, the, they were sad. I was, this, was, this happened before I was born. Everyone was so sad, but uh, nothing was ever. Uh, done about it or mentioned about it. All right. Sorry to hear that story. And all right, for number, I mean, for question three, it is another three part question. Part one Was there anything you felt you couldn't do because of your race? Uh, was there anything I couldn't do? <laughs> the, 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 uh, of course, there were, there were barriers. Uh, the, uh, uh, they legis legislated uh, uh, freedom, and uh, and uh, they were the uh, uh, the uh, amendments, uh, voters' rights amendments, and and everything that said we were even, but uh, 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 but it was not so because you can't legislate morality. Uh, thinking of one of the things that I couldn't do, it, um, my mother and I would often take the Greyhound bus from Lansing, Michigan, down to, to Clarksville, Mississippi, to visit our relatives. And uh, this was when they had the old big double-decker Greyhound buses. They had a lower level right behind the driver and then the upper level. And we got on the bus in Chicago. And, uh, and my mother said, well, we're going to sit right down here behind the driver just to see how it, how it is. Now, this is in the late 50s. And so here we are. I'm enjoying sitting behind the driver because I'm – I'm down there where he is, and I can see the highway and, and out both sides, and I'm very excited. And then when we got to Paducah, Paducah, Kentucky, which was the uh, the Mason-Dixon line, uh, my mama said, boy, get your stuff and get up. We got to go back. And I, I, I said, why? Well, we just got to go on back now. She didn't ever tell me why, but I understood that uh, then, at that, that, that time, in the late 50s, we had to, black folk had to ride uh, the back of the bus, and uh, and so uh, I couldn't ride where I wanted to ride, <laughs> and and, uh, and this this uh, of course uh, continued on and, and was the start of the uh, civil rights uh, uh, movement with the uh, Rosa Parks and the uh, Freedom Riders and so on. All right, part two of question three. Please share a moment when you experienced racism and what was your reaction. What would I spirit experience racism? Uh, well, when we uh, on a trip south, uh, uh, just well, this one I uh, had to move back down south and live with my grandmother. Uh, we would go to the grocery store, and uh, this is in Clarksdale, and on the corner of, of uh, Garfield and Fourth Street, there were three uh, grocery stores. Uh, the better of the three was Peters and Chicoris, and there was Nick's. Then there was a Chinaman store. We just called it the Chinaman store. Never knew his name. But anyway, uh, uh, my grandmother would go to the store, and at that time, she would do what they call take up. She'd take up something, which was nothing but getting uh, a credit. And, uh, and when she would uh, get ready to, to uh, check out, uh, uh, the, uh, the clerk would, would uh, tell her, well, uh, Hey, well, Amy, uh, your bill is so much and so much. We're going to put it on the bill, but you know we got to add tax to that. And uh, and so he would add the tax to it, tell her how much it was. And then uh, at the first of the month when she received her 
check. Uh, she would, uh, we would go down to the store to, to pay off the bill and, and, uh, and settle everything. Well, this time we went to the store to pay off the bill and, uh, the uh, clerk started said, well, Amy, then we call her by her name. We call her Amy. Well, Amy, let's add up the bill and see, uh, how much you owe. And they added, he added up the bill. And then he said, now, you know, the government got to get there. We got to add tax to that. And that's when I said, uh, Mr. Chorus, we, uh, uh, you know, you added tax on that when we first put it on the book. And then he turned, uh, he turned red and got angry. And, uh, he, uh, uh, looked at me and then he looked at my, my grandmother and he said, Annie, if you want this, uh, uh, black, young black, uh, N word to live. Don't you ever bring him back in my store again. And then we were forced to stop trading at Peters and Decorus and go across the street and trade at Nick's Grocery. And this was when I. This was my first real uh, confrontation with uh, racism. Man didn't wanna wanna uh, 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 acknowledge that I was smart enough to stop him from cheating my grandmother. Wow, that's just crazy to think about. All right, and then this is the last part of this question. How did those events affect your life, your family's life, and does it still affect you to this day? Yes, it does, uh, because uh, uh, like I said, we can't legislate morality and uh, these uh, uh, thoughts of segregation, superiority, White supremacy uh, have been embedded uh, so much uh, in in the upbringing of of our kids, uh, the the white kids, uh, the, the the old folks just they, they embed this uh, superiority complex in them so much, and it still it is today, and uh, and we can see that in the, uh, the way uh, uh, system systemic uh, racism continues to be a problem and. And is really brought to to the forefront with the uh, the leadership in the White House that we just had, uh, and also when with the the uh, 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 how a law enforcement uh, tends to uh, treat uh, black folk even today. As an old black man as I am, uh, if I'm driving along, I I, I get nervous uh, if the police uh, uh, roll up and follow me. I get nervous if I have to stop, and uh, even though I may have everything in in uh, in line, uh, uh, car registration up to date, and and uh, car insurance, and and everything, the driver's license up to date, I still get uh, nervous uh, when I am stopped if I'm stopped by a member of law enforcement because of what uh, the uh, trauma that we've had as, as black folk driving while black. All right. Question four, do you feel that attitudes have changed since segregation? Again, I go back to the fact that we, we can legislate <laughs> uh, 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 everything to, to be uh, the uh, free, but still uh, we can't legislate morality. Some things have changed in, in, in that uh, we might not have uh, slavery, but there is slavery of a different name. The uh, federal prisons are full of people of color, uh, and then uh, so much so until they started to uh, have these uh, 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 prisons that that are are uh, uh, prison companies that come to come to bear, and uh, and they, they make money off of us because uh, the governments uh, pay so much for every black prisoner. And so it behooves them, uh, not every black person, but every prisoner. So it behooves them to imprison as many people as they can, that these, these corporations can uh, make money. So uh, the, the things have not necessarily changed. Uh, it's just like the old saying, uh, uh, it, it, they just changed the, 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 uh, the title. So, uh, the Ku Klux Klan's no longer wear robes so much, they wear Brooks Brothers suits. And so on, and they wear police chief uniforms and mayor uniforms. Uh, they, 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 these things are so the underlying thoughts of the underlying feelings have not changed. Wow. All right. For question five, 
It says, what are your thoughts on mental slavery? Do you think that people are still mentally enslaved to this day? And in what manner? Uh, yes, to a certain, ex uh, certain extent, because of the young folk are, 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 are young folk are, are, are changing it right away. I mean, uh, there's a difference. Uh, there was a difference in the, uh, the black life uh, movement uh, than it was during the civil rights movements. Uh, uh, we, uh, we, uh, uh, of course, uh, we know that Dr. King's uh, uh, model of nonviolence is the best way, but uh, a lot uh, of our younger folk are taking the uh, uh, Malcolm X uh, <laughs> thought of by, uh, of by any means uh, necessary. So uh, it's hard to, to change the things that you've been taught. You know, you're taught to do things a certain way, and if you're taught to do certain things, things a certain way, you don't. Even though you get older, you don't. You don't want to change. You, it's hard to change. Change comes about when the very it's very hard for things to change. It is. All right. For the last question, what would you like to see for growth with the Black family, with representation, identity, and diversity? Uh, what I would like to see is uh, for uh, in the black family that the younger folk talk to the older uh, people and that the older people don't try to hide uh, uh, the, the hoops that we had to jump through, the fire that we had to go through, but let them know uh, the things that happen. And, and, and that's just history. Know the history of your family so that uh, they will not be uh, uh, damned or deemed to have to go through that history again. We need to get together and have these uh, uh, discussions. Uh, we, we were so happy to have uh, uh, integration, but uh, we moved in, you know, happily into integration, but uh, it, it is necessary to, to know that a lot of the things that happen with segregation, like pride and self-reliance, uh, because we were forced to, to be proud of ourselves, proud of our neighborhood, and be self-reliant. And then when we became integrated, uh, uh, we seemed to have lost a lot of that uh, uh, family feeling. There was a tie in the neighborhoods. So one family, a child was really raised by a village because if, if someone down the street caught the child doing something wrong, that child would uh, uh, not necessarily, can't beat them down, but he would at least be chastised or pulled the uh, uh, to be, uh, 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 to know that you got to be, uh, 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 responsible for, for your actions. So we just need to, to talk, families just need to talk and, uh, to, and to tell, talk about their experiences that these, so that these things won't happen again. Yeah, I totally agree. Hearing those stories, it just, it just teaches you so much about like how how grateful we should be and everything right once, once again thank you very much for sharing with us a little bit about yourself and your thoughts on the black family representation identity and diversity uh, it is my my pleasure all right now we'll be getting on to the second part of the four-part series <laughs>